Hi guys, okay, we're back with another video from Elevations Online. Right, I'm going to be covering again microeconomics part 5. We are back with supply. Okay, I'm going to move on to supply and then after this PES and then we're going to go into price adjustment programs, all your graphs, that kind of st uh, good stuff. Okay, so I've already gone through demand. Okay, the link will be up in the top right corner of the screen. Go check it out if you have not. Okay, demand and supply, they work in uh, hand in hand. So you need to make sure you know and understand what demand is all about first. All right, then you go through this. Okay, demand and supply are very similar. They are basically just polar opposites. All right, so without further ado, let's go right in. Okay, definition of supply. Get the highlighter real quick. Okay. Supply is the quantity of a good or service that producers are willing and able to sell at a given price over a particular period of time, such as per burst. All right. Over in supply, we're looking at producers. Back in demand, if you recall, we were looking at consumers. All right. So demand is always provided by uh, by consumers. And then um, um, supply is always provided by the producers. All right. That is how they interact in the market. Okay, this is how all markets work. Okay, there's always a demand, there's always a supply. Okay, so the law of supply states, okay, that there is a direct relationship between the price and the quantity um, supply of a good. Okay, remember we're looking at quantity supply of a good, okay, and that there is a direct relationship. Okay, what does this mean? All right, it means that when there is an increase in price, there will definitely be an increase in the quantity demanded. Okay, likewise, if there's a fall in price, there will be a fall in quantity, I mean, not demanded, sorry, quantity supplied. Okay, so it's quantity supply. we're looking at supply, not demand. Okay, the reason why, okay, is because price always acts as a signal, okay? We call our signaling effect. I think I may not have gone through it yet. Okay, I'll go through it soon. Okay, but essentially when um, there is a demand, okay, remember demand is always indicated as the price okay that consumers are willing to pay which means that when there is this demand okay there is a price that consumers are demanding suppliers will be willing to um actually supply okay that is in the case of when there is an increase okay in the price okay so as a result okay the supply curve is always sloping upwards okay as we recall the reason for this is because your supply um, um, has a direct relationship. Okay, so when there's an increase in price, there will be an increase in quantity demand. Likewise, a fall. Okay, hence, the curve looks like this. It is always going to be going upwards. Okay, so at higher output levels, the marginal cost of producing will increase. Okay, basically, your cost of production will increase at higher levels of quantity. Okay, hence, producers will, be, will want to be compensated with higher prices so as to be willing to produce more. Okay, so quantity supply will only increase if the price increases. Okay, so just take note, price is always signaled by demand. Okay, so every time there's a demand, then there will be a supply as well. Okay, so the supply curve, okay, when there's a change in quantity supply, okay, it is represented by a movement along the curve. Okay, and this is affected by price. Okay, on the other hand, when there's a change in supply, okay, there will be a shift in the entire curve. Okay, so leftwards if there is a fall in supply and rightwards if there is an increase in supply. So if you recall, okay, from demand, it is the exact same thing. Okay, in this case, supply is also represented by, a, uh, when there's a change in supply, it's also represented by a shift. And this is affected by non-price factors, which we will go through later on. Alright, so just take note of all this first, K okay, or demand and supply curve. Okay, supply curve is basically the same thing. Alright, if you are still unsure, okay, I'll just run through real quick over here. Okay, a movement is basically anywhere that is along this line over here. This is the original supply curve. Okay, so for example, if there was a change in price, okay, I say this is the original price, the yellow one. Okay, the green one is the new one. Okay, the price has increased. Okay, a quantity will also increase. Okay, let me just uh, get this correct. Okay, so it always goes to here. Okay, so there was an increase in quantity when there was an increase in price. All right, okay, moving on. What are non-price factors affecting supply, okay? If you want to have an easy way to remember, okay, acronym will be wet pick, okay? Weather expectation of future prices, technological changes, price of related goods, input costs, and government policies, all right? Firstly, weather. Okay, changes in weather can actually cause um, supply to either rise or fall, okay? Very simply, right? Think of it like crops, okay? When there is a drought, okay, definitely the supply of things like your vegetables, of um, carrots, potatoes, lettuce, whatever, they will definitely fall, right? When there's a drought, because why? There's not enough water for them to even grow in the first place, okay? So likewise, if there is a flood, okay, it may also destroy um, things like your, your vegetation, okay, or either that with higher rainfall, okay, it could actually help to increase the supply of your vegetables, your crops. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Okay, next, expectation of future prices. Okay, basically, if the market price of a good is expected to rise in the future, what actually happens okay, is that producers are willing to hold back supply. Okay, f- because um, they want to sell in, in the future, right? Because of higher prices and profits. So this can result in a fall in the current supply. Okay, so this is similar to your demand factor as well, right? We call expectation of future prices. Um, in this case, producers, if they feel that the price of a good will go up in the future, let's say because of possibly an increase in demand, okay, or let's say it's just a mindset that they have, they could actually hold back current supply and wait for it to um, increase next time. Then they increase their quantity supply next time as well. So this can result in a fall in the current supply um, of 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 whatever the market is um, is okay. All right, technological changes. This is quite important. Okay, when there's technology upgrades, what actually happens is that producers can produce faster or perhaps more goods. Okay, better better goods. Okay, with each factor of production. Okay, remember your factor of production is your LLEC. Right. So, for example, okay, one very clear example is things like um a lot of buildings. Okay, what they do is they build it off site, and then when it comes to a- the actual construction site, what they do is they just pull it up. Okay, sort of like Lego bricks. Okay, so this can actually increase efficiency, increase productivity, and this is a recent technological advancement that has been made in society. Right. So when you see all these tech changes, okay, things like AI, okay, all these will definitely help to increase the supply. Okay, because what actually happens is that um things can be done faster in the same amount of time. Okay, price of related goods. Okay, there are two main types of related goods. Okay, there's joint, joint supply and then competitive supply. Okay, essentially joint supply okay, is things like beef and hide, which is leather. Right? So let's say if the price of beef increases, the quantity supply of beef will also increase. Well, and then, but at the same time, while there is no increase in the price of height, okay, the supply will also increase, okay, because why? When you kill a cow, you need, in order to get beef, you need to kill a cow, right? But by killing the cow, you also get leather, which is produced. And you're not just going to throw it away, you'll definitely sell it. Okay, so what actually happens is that when, let's say, the price of one good actually increases, the other will also, um, uh, the, su- con- the supply of the other, let's say, uh, something else, okay, will actually increase as well. So think of this like, like, like your complements, okay, joint supply. Okay, then you have got comp- um, competitive supply. Competitive supply is basically the opposite. It's basically like substitutes, okay? Um, for example, increase in rearing of cattle due to increased price. Okay, let's say that if there's an increase in price, more suppliers will want to rear cattle, okay, because um, they can reap greater profits, right? So the supply of vegetables may fall, okay, even though there is no change in its price because the land was actually used to take up uh, for the greater price the cattle, okay? So you notice this a lot in, for example, today's cow industry, Right, black cows tend to be favored more than the white ones. Okay, as a result, you notice that a lot of these black cows are being um reared, and then the white cows are um or either that the land that was once used for white cows is actually being reduced instead. Okay, so suppliers always look at price. Okay, they are attracted to price in order to maximize their profits. Okay, input cost is basically um what are the costs required? Okay, that you need to in include okay in order for production to occur okay so when input causes rise okay less profit will be made at the same selling price hence your supply your quantity supply okay your supply will fall um so for example when there's an increase in cost of production okay um because of the factors of production okay supply will definitely fall okay because producers are less willing to actually um produce at the same price okay because if an increase in price and a fall um, and let's say if your revenue is constant, your profits will still fall. Okay, we'll look at this in market structure later on. Okay, one more is increase in worker productivity. Okay, so this can actually result in a fall, okay, in cost of production, let's say if there's a skills upgrade. Okay, so as a result, the labor unit cost for each unit of good will actually fall. Hence, your supply will increase. And lastly, improvement in state of technology. Okay, this one is similar to just now what we covered. Okay, your technology. Okay, more goods can be produced within the same amount of time. Okay, so, so the cost of one unit of good can actually fall. Okay, so this will cause supply to increase as well. Alright, so the so basically the last one, the last um factor we have your G. Okay, it's going to be government policies. Okay, so you have got subsidies and indirect taxes. These are the two main government policies. So when a government actually um, implements subsidies, what actually happens is that the cost of production can be reduced. 
Okay, you will learn this later on, okay, in the microeconomic policies. Alright, and this can actually increase profit with reduced costs. Okay, and this can cause an increase in supply. Okay, because producers are more willing to supply. Alright, but on the other hand, indirect taxes, okay, which can also be imposed on, let's say, your goods which have got um, negative externalities, okay, um, it could act as an additional cost of production, hence causing the um, unit cost of the good to increase, and hence your supply may actually fall. Alright, so these are just extras, okay, government policies that can be implemented to forcefully um, determine the level of supply. Okay, so moving on to exam requirements, hey, like every other video, right? Understand the difference okay, between supply and quantity supply. Okay, remember like I said there are differences, right? Quantity supply is always affected by price. Okay, and then supply is always affected by non-price factors. Okay, so if we just want to recap again, right? I'll just do this because I know a lot of people tend to be confused at this part. Okay, quantity supply is affected by price. Okay, which means that let's say given a diagram like this, this is your supply curve. Okay, when there is a change in price, let's say this is the original price. Okay, I'll call this P0, okay, P1, and then Q1. Okay, when there is an increase in price, okay, what happens is that the graph, let's say, moves up here to this new price. We call this P2. Okay, and then this will have a new quantity called Q2 over here. This is a movement along the curve, okay, because you notice that the movement was actually this area over here, right? So this is where it has actually increased up to this new quantity, okay, so that is called a movement. On the other hand, a shift, okay, as a result of a non-price factor, for example, this was S1, Okay, so let's say if there are technological changes, okay, and then the cost of production has reduced, okay, what actually happens is that supply will increase. So supply increases by going outwards here to S2. So let's say this was the original P1, Q1. Okay, at the new supply curve, okay, let's say if um, uh, we are assuming that the price had, did not change, Okay, what actually happens as a result, right? Okay, remember the price did not change. Okay, the reason why is because we are looking at non-price factors, right? So this is a technological advancement. So the price did not change at all. So at this same price, you notice that quantity supplied has actually moved up. Okay, remember to label axis. Okay, I didn't label here because um, uh, I, I, I mean... Okay, like, I mean, I can label uh, for good practice, right? Okay, but just remember to label it. Okay, so in this case, you notice that quantity supplied had actually increased outwards to here. Right, from Q1 to Q2. Okay, so just take note of the difference here okay, when there is a change in non-price as well as when there is a change in your price. So this is non-price. Price is a movement. So non-price is always a shift and then non-price is always a movement. All right, lastly, just take note, okay, that this can come in conjunction with your demand factors. I've already gone through in the previous video. Link is down below and up there as well. Okay, go and check it out, all right? If not, that's all I have for supply. Okay, next one, I'll go through PES. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Um, If not, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, it really does help me out a lot as well as subscribe to the channel. Okay, and leave any comments or any questions if you have down below and I'll be sure to answer them. All right, so to the next one, I'll see you guys then. Um, Bye-bye.